In response to the September 11th, 2001 attacks on the United States, then President yes. George, yes. Sorry, I, um, I, we can see your power, the PowerPoint, um, but not the presentation mode or pre the presentation view. It's still showing the original. Oh, so you might need to reshare your screen. Sorry to interrupt you, but I- No, no, thank you. <laughs> okay, how's that? Is it full now? That's, yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, um, then President George W. Bush announced the U.S. commitment to a global war on terror that sought to dismantle transnational terrorist organizations and the networks of private and state funding that supported them. Not long after this, uh, this inauguration of the Homeland Security State, Hurricane Katrina and the 2005 flooding of New Orleans offered a glimpse of the dystopian effects of U.S. counterterrorism. Amidst the widespread suffering of largely poor and Black New Orleanians, state and federal officials, the news media, and private citizens characterized survivors as quote unquote insurgents and national security risks. Heavily armed police, military, and paramilitary forces herded alleged looters and, in one instance, assumed terrorists into an outdoor detention facility modeled after Guantanamo Bay. Since then, the incorporation of war on terror military tactics into domestic governance has continued unabated. State and federal agencies portrayed the hashtag no dapple protests at Standing Rock, North Dakota as a quote, pipeline insurgency to be suppressed by private security forces. In Portland, Oregon, contractors snatched up Black Lives Matter protesters, driving them away in unmarked vans. Along the US-Mexico border, similarly employed contractors currently detain and deport unaccompanied Central American miners in a shadow immigration system outside of existing legal channels. The mapping project I detail today excavates one common thread connecting each of these events. That is the growing prevalence of counterterror rhetoric, policy, and paramilitary deployment not only in moments of crisis, but increasingly in response to democratic expression. Specifically, this Seussvalent project tracks the deployment of state-funded private security contractors, or PSCs, against racialized populations in the United States and in Puerto Rico. It further reveals how these instances are related by tracing the movement of contractors from one area of real or perceived crisis to another, beginning with a national overview showing major events where PSCs have been deployed between 2005 and the present day. The map markers then link to location specific digital projects to document security tactics and public resistance. Um, to, oh, uh, we were wondering if your slides were moving. Yep, no, I'm good. Thank you. So this project looks at three different areas. Uh, one is counterinsurgency and disaster response. And specifically, we have locations in New Orleans, Louisiana, and San Juan, Puerto Rico. It also looks at uh, deployments in, in um, instances of democratic protest at Standing Rock, with the Dakota Access Pipeline, and then again in uh, Portland, Oregon with Black Lives Matter. And finally, uh, the map is locating the, the location of uh, this shadow immigration system, uh, which has occurred all along the US border, uh, but specifically in McAllen, Texas. So I'd like to take the next few minutes to describe uh, you know, where these PSCs are showing up and what they're doing. So we'll look at each pin on the national map, and then I will show an example of what happens when you click on those pins. So first up, disaster response. In the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, government officials and the news media turned to counter-terror discourses of, quote, shock and awe, devastation, and black, quote, unquote, insurgents to describe the situation. And I apologize for the quality of this image. Blackwater did not like their picture taken, so uh, we only have this fuzzy, blurry uh, artifact. 
According to Nicholas Murzoff, a now deleted Army Times article from September 2nd, 2005, bluntly stated that, quote, National Guard would be combating an insurgency in the city of New Orleans. David Addington, who was counsel to Vice President Dick Cheney, quote, began invoking the specter of insurgents whose existence would permit the president to send in military force under the Insurrection Act, unquote. In response to the security situation, more than 235 private contracting companies deployed to New Orleans, though no one arrived sooner than Blackwater USA. 150 Blackwater contractors arrived in New Orleans within 36 hours of the levy failures and they were preceded only by the U.S. Coast Guard and the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries, both of whom were already stationed in the area and had begun search and rescue operations. However, where the Coast Guard and Wildlife and Fisheries had you know, entered the area with uh, helicopters and boats, Blackwater contractors entered the city uh, from a previous deployment in Iraq with full military gear, including desert fatigues, flak jackets, M16 assault rifles, and tactical shotguns. After a week operating under self-deployed status, as they called it, uh, Blackwater secured an official contract with the Department of Homeland Security. And while I have been unable to find the exact terms of the contract, uh, investigative reporter Jeremy Scahill spoke with uh, Blackwater when they were stationed here and they uh, characterized their work as, quote, securing neighborhoods and confronting criminals, end quote. They also claim to have been deputized by Governor Blanco herself, which she has since disputed, and could use lethal force if they deemed it necessary. So we see a repeat of this with Hurricane Maria. It seems to be that the deployment of private security forces has become a staple of hurricane response. As during Hurricane Katrina, local governments in Puerto Rico, the US federal government and private individuals hired PSCs to protect hotels, communication networks, relief workers and fresh water supplies in the wake of Hurricane Maria in September, 2017. Now, given their performance during Katrina, it's perhaps no surprise that Blackwater, who had switched their names and rebranded so that they were now called Academy, quickly received, quote, offers from the local and federal government and by the Red Cross to come to Puerto Rico. Academy and other US companies, including Tiger Swan, and remember their name, Tiger Swan, uh, Ranger America and the Whitestone Group signed contracts with the Puerto Rican government, businesses and private individuals. And these U.S. companies mainly secured the communications and hotel sectors of San Juan, along with the exclusive Ciudadela complex, which is an exclusive community of residential, retail, and green space in the San Terce district. Similar to the security response in post-Katrina New Orleans, these uh, investigators have since uh, encountered difficulty tracking the origins of the government contracts. When asked if his agency had authorized the hiring of PSCs, Puerto Rico's FEMA director, Alejandro de la Campa, could only respond, I don't really know the answer. So in a particularly disturbing development, the deployment of PSCs has expanded from disaster response, where we could kind of write this off as you know, some sort of exceptional emergency. Uh, it has expanded into the suppression of democratic protests. Now, Tiger Swan, who had responded to hurricane disasters uh, in Puerto Rico, in North Carolina, and Texas, and had gotten their start in New Orleans after Katrina, has joined forces with local, state, and federal law officials, uh, enforcement agencies, and prosecutors to shut down the No Dapple protests in Standing Rock, North Dakota. As with the Katrina disaster, discourse between the private security contractors and state agencies drew on the language of terrorism and insurgency to criminalize water protectors. Internal Tiger Swan communications leaked to the Intercept journalists, uh, quote, described the No Dapple movement as 
an ideologically driven insurgency with a strong religious component that generally followed the jihadist insurgency model, end quote. In addition to conflating water protectors with jihadists, Tiger Swan described their intelligence work, infiltrative operations, and protest disruptions as, quote, battlefield operations through which they sought to defeat pipeline insurgencies. You see something very similar in Portland, uh, where Black Lives Matter protesters had gathered outside of a federal courthouse to demonstrate against the murders of unarmed Black men. Um, with the arrival of federal forces, the protests grew increasingly violent. And once again, we see the deployment of counterterror and counterinsurgent rhetoric to criminalize the protests as both a matter of civil unrest and a matter of national security. Uh, then President Donald Trump characterized protesters as terrorists and promised to launch a quote surge, thus echoing the rhetoric of President Bush uh, when he described the influx of troops into Afghanistan and Iraq in the early 2000s. Now, I'm running out of time, so I do want to get to the map, um, but private security contractors are picking up uh, unaccompanied minors as they cross the border, keeping them in hotels, and then driving them back across the border so that the, the children never are able to uh, file for asylum. Um, so they have expanded really into all purviews of uh, security, law enforcement, and increasingly prosecution also. Now the map itself introduces the topic with a national overview to show the different areas and the different categories of private security contractor deployment. Each pin is clickable with a pop-up that will describe the project title and then a brief description and then as you scroll down through, this is a story map site, as you scroll down through it, uh, you'll find a detailed uh, section dedicated to each project with a link that will take visitors to those project sites. For example, clicking on the insurgents on the Bayou link will take visitors to the Hurricane Katrina project, uh, which maps out the location and personnel staffing various security checkpoints throughout New Orleans. There's a number of overlays that you can uh, toggle on or off. Uh, for instance, one is a flood depth map, and this is a work in, in progress, very much so. So there needs to be some tweaks with like transparency. Uh, but you can start to see where uh, the, the military, police, and paramilitaries were setting up location checkpoints and headquarters. You can also compare the locations of these checkpoints to the demographics of the city. And unsurprisingly, we can see that most of the checkpoints occur in majority Black neighborhoods. The red dots are, they represent, each dot represents 10 white individuals. Each blue dot represents 10 uh, African-American individuals. And most of these checkpoints additionally, are located in the centers of capital, right here in the Central Business District and Warehouse District, and over here in the French Quarter. So my preliminary conclusions, there has been a, an exponential increase in the resurgence of counterterror and counterinsurgent rhetoric and practices deployed against domestic US citizens. Um, and their colonized territories since 9-11. War on terror policies, including the deployment of PSCs have infiltrated disaster response and also law enforcement practices. These counter-terror and counter-insurgent tactics are only expanding and becoming more deeply entrenched. We can see this with the use of PSCs to conduct investigations for prosecution. And finally, ad hoc and piecemeal government responses aren't regulating the actions of PSCs. Instead, they, the federal government particularly is partnering with PSCs in this trend of privatization and kind of the reallocation of responsibility. So I am very much looking forward to, I see a lot of connections here between our multiple projects. I'm very much looking forward to 
uh, you know, talking about deep mapping and some of the issues that we've encountered. But thank you very much for your attention today.